Hi friends, I'm Brie and welcome to me time. I have not had a whole lot of time to create over the past couple months, but I wanted to make one last thing, one last project for this year for myself, for me to enjoy. And I have something in mind that I've actually wanted to make for a while now. If you happen to see my last video, you will know that I am fully consumed by Animal Crossing. Oh, uh, wow, yeah. Yikes. But my favorite item slash DIY in the game is the mushroom wreath. I love this thing. I think it is so cute. I have it on my house. I have it on my villagers' houses. I put it in every house that I decorate in the DLC. Some little hamster will be like, I want a space station house. And I'll be like, okay, um, well, how about a mushroom wreath? I want this item in my life, in my real life. I have a vision for this project. I have not looked up any other videos or tutorials about how to make this thing, even though I'm sure they probably exist out there. I just wanna go into this thing fresh. I really think I can make this thing work. I think it's gonna spark joy, it's gonna be good. So let's just get into it. Okay, for this project, I'll be using a twig wreath form, some fake fern leaves, dried crafting straw, polymer or oven bake clay, some fake moss, acrylic paint in a few different colors, paint top coat or varnish, some paint brushes and dotting tools, and a hot glue gun. I'm gonna start forming all the mushrooms with my clay here. The first one being the flat mushroom, but instead of making it perfectly round like it is in the game, I'm going to flatten one side of it because I think that'll just sit better on the wreath form. And we're gonna need seven of these in varying sizes. And when I'm done, I'm just placing them on my baking sheet here and moving on to the next one. The next mushroom to make is the round mushroom. This guy's probably the easiest. It's just a little half dome shape with a stump connected to the underside. And we'll need five of those. They don't have to be perfect. Mine, mine be looking a little bit homemade, a little bit rustic, but that's okay. We're gonna put them off to the side here. And then the next mushroom needed is going to be the rare mushroom. So I'm just using a dotting tool here to go over all around the surface, making little indents. And then we just need two of those. Now I'll pop them on the baking sheet. Next mushroom we need is the skinny mushroom. Same principle here, just a longer and skinnier stems. We'll need four of those. Something I learned from this project is I should really wear rubber gloves when working with this type of clay because uh, I had mad fingerprints all over these things. Polymer clay be holding fingerprints like it works for the FBI, frankly. Yeah, it was bad, it was really annoying, but I didn't have any gloves. And then the last mushroom we needed is the elegant mushroom. These are the big boys, kind of looking like microphones. We just needed two of those. And then these guys are ready to bake. I'm just gonna preheat my oven and follow the baking instructions on the Sculpey packaging. And once they're all set and cooled down, that part is important. I'm gonna put down a base coat of white acrylic paint on all these. I, I like a base coat, I always opt for one. Even though it wasn't fully necessary with this project, I think the paint held up just fine on its own. But now we get to move on to color. Ooh, exciting. Various shades of brown, wow. For the flat mushrooms, I've painted them beige and then I've got a golden brown color. I'm just gonna work from the center outward to create a little gradient here. And then I just painted the underside full, full brown. Next up, we've got the round mushrooms. These are white in the game, so I don't have a ton of work to do on these. I'm just going to paint the stems cream, give another layer of white on the caps, and then blend a little bit of that cream color on the very top. Onto the skinny mushrooms. These have a brown gradient look as well. So I've laid down a layer of beige and I've got a couple different brown tones here. I'm gonna blend down the cap and then do the same gradient in the opposite direction down the stem, which looks like minutes, seconds for you here, but was actually hours of work for me. Okay, for the little rare boys, it's kind of hard to make out how these are colored in the game. So I'm just keeping it simple. I've painted both of them dark brown, and then I'm gonna take that golden brown color and just dot a little highlight in each of the indents. All right, last paint job, home stretch. We get to break out a color that's not brown. Oh yeah, look at that burgundy cap and the famous white spots. I must fight the urge to go overboard with these. I think that looks respectable, a tasteful amount. The last thing I'm gonna do to these mushrooms is cover them in a top coat. I spent so many hours painting these that if one of them chipped or scratched, I would become mentally unhinged, I think. I did about three coats of that matte varnish on each of them and oh my God, they're finally done, praise be. 
and it is now time to assemble the wreath. I got my hot glue gun heating up over here. I'm gonna take out a handful of that green moss. I also have another package that has some different colors, so I'm gonna take some of that out, spice it up, why not? And then now I'm just gonna cover the bottom half of my wreath form. This part's pretty self-explanatory, just laying down the glue and adding the moss pieces bit by bit until it looks full. Gorgeous, wow, truly a vision. Now the wreath in the game looks like it has three fern leaves wrapped around the moss. I'm using some wire cutters here to cut off three leaves from my little bunch here. And since they are wire, I can bend them into roughly the shape that I want to curve around the moss. And then I just need to glue each one down where I want it. And now we're just gonna carry on with gluing down each mushroom into place. I've got a picture of the inspo wreath next to me here so I can reference where I need to place each mushroom. I was a bit worried that the hot glue would not stick well to the smooth, glossed surface of these mushrooms. One time I tried to hot glue things onto a pumpkin and that did not work at all. I was picturing that fiasco again, so I did have some super glue nearby in case I needed it, but the hot glue actually worked perfectly fine. You do need to hold each piece down in place until the glue dries and hardens, but after that, it's pretty solid. I also pulled back the moss in areas where I needed to place a mushroom stem so the glue would make contact with the wreath form directly and not just the moss glued on top. And once all those were glued down and in place, I took some small pieces of that leftover moss and just patched over some areas where the hot glue was either showing or I wanted a little bit more coverage. And the last thing we have to do is add a bow on top of this wreath. This dried straw was only sold in a giant bag, but I really only needed a small handful. So I have an ungodly amount of it with my craft supplies now and absolutely no idea what to do with it. So, so that's fun. I've just taken a few strands and tied it off around a larger bunch to create a very rustic looking bow and hot glue that baby to the top, trim down the strands a little bit. And are you ready for the grand reveal? Quick little reminder, here is what we were going for and here is what we got. Oh my god, it's beautiful! I actually really love how it turned out. This is sparking joy. It's giving me Animal Crossing. It's giving me cottage core. It's giving me, I just made this in herbology class and now I have to hang it in my hobbit hole kind of energy. Did I carry my wreath out into the woods wearing a wool sweater on an 80 degree day just to get these aesthetic woodland shots? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I did. Shout out to the man who passed me wearing nothing but running shorts. Good day to you, sir just out here trying to live my forest witch life. And that is all I got for you, my friends. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and have a great holiday. I will see you next year. Bye.